Hello. Uh, the example we're looking at here in this video is the case of filling up a tanker uh, with ethylene or, or ethene. Uh, so the, the ethene is being supplied from a, a huge storage tank that's kept at 5 megapascals and, and 25 degrees Celsius and we're taking the gas from that and putting it into a tanker, so like a road tanker or uh, a, a small storage tank or something like that. Now, the first thing I need to do with this system is to uh, define what my system is and then think about uh, what assumptions could be useful for solving this problem. So, so looking at my system here, so what I've got is a uh, is a tank. It's probably not square uh, in real life if there's a tanker going into it. And so I've got my gas going in. So my gas is at uh, 5 megapascals and uh, 25 degrees Celsius. And that's pretty much it. So there's nothing coming out of my system. So, and I'm going to assume that my system is reasonably uh, well insulated as well. And so, so then there's, there's nothing else really going on here. There's no work happening. Um, we can't see anything happening external to the tank. Uh, there's no shaft spinning or anything like that. So, so to solve this problem, I'm going to make uh, a couple of assumptions. So the, the first of these is that I'm dealing with uh, pure ethane. Okay, so um, that I don't need to take into account uh, any other components there. The second thing is that my system is constant volume. Okay, so, so I'm not expecting my tanker to change volume over time. It's, it's not a balloon. Um, the third one is that my inlet conditions are constant. Okay, so, and that's a reasonable assumption to make. So we're assuming that back this way is a, is a very large storage tank that has a much, much larger volume than this tank that we're interested in here. Uh, as I said, I'm, I'm going to say that there's no uh, heat transfer. So, okay, so, so that's equal to, to zero. Uh, and so that, that's a bit questionable. Tanks are normally made out of metal, so but uh, I'm assuming that that effect is small compared to the other effects in the system. And I'm going to assume that my tank is empty. So this is partly because I know that this assumption will help me solve it a little bit later on, but it's a reasonable assumption to make. So even so, normally the residual gas in your tank will be about one atmosphere. So that's one fiftieth of what we'll end up putting in the tank. Yeah, so, so if we if we go back and we uh, start off with our uh, first law equation, okay. So I'll pop the equation in there. And so based on our assumptions, we start cancelling stuff out. Okay, so, so the system's constant volume, it's not at steady state. Okay, so, so the volume doesn't change with time, so this term here goes to zero. We haven't got any work happening, okay, so I'll add that in uh, as an assumption here. Okay, so there's no work happening. We've already said that, that we're expecting the, the heat to be uh, negligible. And we've got no flow out of the system. And so what we end up with is a, a much simplified equation where now uh, we have to look at this and figure out uh, what we're trying to do. Okay, so and uh, the first thing I'll do is I'll actually convert this to uh, a per mole uh, basis. 
So that's just uh, matches up with what I've done in uh, Mist already. Okay, so now if we look at the mass balance of the system, okay, so I've taken this the energy balance as far as I can at the moment. If we look at the mass balance for the system, then the uh, change in the number of moles uh, with respect to time is just equal to the flow rate in. Now, if these two terms, so if this is equal to this, then I can simply substitute that in up here. Okay, and so I'll just get rid of uh, that term there. Okay, and replace it with the uh, correct term. Okay, so that's my molar flow in. So, so if I substitute that in and write that into my equation here. Okay, so uh, the uh, n u to t. I'm sorry, I'm missing an underline there is equal to uh, h in dn dt. So, so now I can cancel out my dt's, multiply both sides by dt. And an important thing here is that we've said that the inlet conditions are constant. Okay, so if they're always at the same temperature and they're always at the same pressure, that means that this enthalpy here has to always be the same. So, so now I'm going to, to integrate both sides of this equation from my starting point, okay, I'll just call that condition one, to my end point, which is the, the filled condition of the tank. So, so integrating this, so from the initial product of, of the amount and the uh, and the internal energy to the final uh, product of the amount and the initial energy. And so I'm just integrating that new. And so, um, and then on the other side, I can take my enthalpy out front because it's constant. And then I'm just integrating from N1. Okay, I'm doing I's instead of uh, ones here. Okay, so I'm integrating from N1 to N2, so my final number of moles in the system. So when I do that integration, so it's just a simple uh, single factor here, then I get N2 U2 minus uh, N1 uh, U1 is equal to H in outside of N2 minus N1. Okay, so, so now my other assumption here that the tank was initially empty. So at condition one, the tank was empty. And so then uh, this disappears as well. And so what we get is And then we can cancel out N2, okay, the final amount in the system. And so we get the, the final internal energy is equal to the enthalpy coming in. Okay, so, so if you switch to, uh, if you go and have a look at the NIST demonstration video that I've, I've put on Blackboard, I can show you how to uh, find the properties of uh, the internal energy and the enthalpy for uh, for ethane. Okay, so um, so switch there once you've finished looking at this video to see how I get this next lot of information. And so from this, what I'm able to find is that at temperature equals to 25 degrees Celsius and uh, pressure equal to five megapascals my enthalpy in is equal to uh, 15.4 uh, kilojoules per mole. Okay. 
then my job is to find the pressure or the temperature I mean when so my final pressure I know it's equal to 5 megapascals but I don't know what my final temperature is okay, so, so it's a case of going to the tables and finding a temperature where you where the internal energy is equal to this enthalpy here and so to do that um, or what ends up happening is that because the uh, enthalpy is equal to the internal energy plus pressure times by volume then at a given temperature U is always smaller than enthalpy so, so if I'm at the same pressure then I have to increase the temperature to get to the same internal energy as pressure and so as you'll see in the in the NIST video the temperature where uh, the internal energy is equal to 15.4 kilojoules per mole is equal to 52 degrees Celsius okay, so so the temperature goes up and so what's the reason for the temperature going up the reason that the temperature goes up is because if we go back to our system okay we've only got flow coming in so the flow work to push its way into the system is happening but there's no flow work to get out of the system so work's being done on the system the work's not doing any work on the surroundings so therefore that work coming in has to be translated into internal energy and if it's being turned into internal energy uh, without any reaction happening then that must mean that the temperature is going up. Cool, okay, thank you.